Okay guys, today we are getting back to basics. So I feel like we have been going down this path of talking about how to develop a wedding photography business, but I thought it would be a great time to step back a little bit and let's talk to some of our beginner photographers. I know there's a lot of beginner photographers that follow this channel and that are a part of several of my Facebook groups, so I wanted to make this specifically for you. Whether you are new in photography or you are experienced, I am sure that many of us, if not all of us, have come to a point or feel like we are currently at a point that we can't get beyond, whether we don't understand more about photography or we want to take our photography to another level. So today I wanted to make a video about the top five mistakes that beginner photographers make. So the first mistake that a lot of beginner photographers make is not understanding your camera. There's a lot of things that you can do to figure out your camera and I strongly encourage you to do so. Whether this is reading your manual back to front, <laughs> front to back. <laughs> Whether this is reading your manual front to back, learning while you're on location, or taking your camera out every single day just to get a feel for it and different kinds of locations will help you learn about photography, but will really help you learn about your equipment as well. Another thing you could do would be to watch YouTube videos or to watch any educational videos about the exact camera body that you have. You could also talk to any photographer colleagues or friends that you might have if you take any classes or any workshops or if you have any art classes available in your town, run on up there one day, bring your camera with and see if anybody can help you. There are so many resources for you and I absolutely can't stand it when people blame their camera for not being able to take a good photo. Yes, this is an overused excuse, but sometimes it's legitimately true. There's a lot of people that don't know how their cameras function. So it's about time that you learn. Piggybacking on that point, my second photographer mistake is that you're not choosing the appropriate lens. This is something that I see often, and believe me, I get it. Lenses are expensive and we prioritize which lenses we want the most. So sometimes we bring out lenses that are not appropriate and do what we can with the equipment that we have. So what exactly do I mean? You have to understand as a beginner in photography that different lenses are really going to give you a different kind of look. It's not always the same and it's not supposed to be the same. So if I were to take a photo of somebody with a 50 millimeter lens and I would also take a photo of someone with let's say a 24 millimeter lens, depending on whether I am horizontal or vertical, the message will be extremely different. A 50 millimeter lens is said to be pretty similar to the human eye, so there's not a lot of lens distortion, but on a wide angle lens, there's distortion. That person is going to look really tall if it is a vertical photo and possibly pretty wide if I take a horizontal photo. So you definitely want to make sure that you have lenses in your kit that are suited to what you want to shoot. And also you want to make sure that when you're going out to shoot something specific, that you bring a lens that's pretty well suited. The third photographer mistake that I commonly see is not shooting in the appropriate lighting. Yes, there are instances where you might not have control over the time of day that you can shoot at or the direction of the lighting, depending on what you're looking at. But but when you have the ability of choosing the, the time of day for a photo shoot or the direction of where you can shoot something, it's really important that you understand what is good light and, and what is not. I have told you this in the past and I am sticking to it. Bring your camera out in different times of the day with different kinds of lighting, with different types of clients, either humans or pets or standing objects, statues, whatever you've got. The fourth mistake that I commonly see with new photographers is understanding rule of thirds or basically composition. The impact of a photo can change dramatically if somebody is over to the right, to the left, in the middle, if they're looking one direction or another, sometimes where the light and the shadows meet. There is so much to photography psychology and how images resonate with people. Regardless of what kind of photography you're doing, whether it's portraits, weddings, product photography, or, or just events in general, how you compose an image can resonate with someone. If you're interested in what the rule of thirds is, it's basically taking an image and breaking it up into nine particular categories with two lines going down and two two lines going across. Generally, they say that the best places to place your subject in a photo 
would be at the intersections of these lines or directly on top of them. The placement of the subjects in these areas is really supposed to be ideal for photography and it's supposed to resonate different kinds of feelings with the viewer of that particular photo. Understanding things like the rule of thirds and good composition in photography will really help you get to the next level in photography. The fifth and final photographer mistake that I'm most commonly seeing is when photographers are not shooting in RAW. So what exactly is a RAW photo? The RAW photo is exactly what it sounds like. It is untouched and unblemished. It is RAW. If you were to take a photo in your camera and use all of the settings to take an appropriate photo and you were to shoot it in RAW, when you look at the file back on your computer, it is as shot and it is zero processing or minimal processing and it is ready to be edited. However, not ready to be printed until you continue through with an editing process on it. If you were to shoot that same photo in a JPEG, the camera understands that it needs to be ready to print to some extent, so the camera will start to change the color settings and the brightness settings as it squishes the file and flattens it. So shooting in RAW really enables you to have full access to whatever you want to do with a file. If you are trying to take your photography to the next level and have some sort of image process that you want to try on your photos, shooting in RAW will give you the best possible end result, starting from square one and then hopefully taking it from there. So I hope some of these tips helped you guys. I would love to hear down below in the comments. What was your biggest mistake when you were starting in photography? Or are you beginning photography now and have one of these five mistakes? I would love to hear from you guys. Like this video if you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.